step-by-step -step how to paint. And I do that online like today, ta-da, and also in my studio. So welcome to this week's episode of Hearty Tips with Silka. This week I am going to be talking all about grass, 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 and painting online and whatnot. Um, so let me know in the comments if you have ever tried to paint grass and how you got on painting your grass. If I keep looking up, it's because I'm looking up at the people on Instagram. And if I keep looking down on Instagram, it's because I'm looking at the people at Facebook. I want to say hi to all of you. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to figure out a closer way. Uh, I hope it's not too weird. But yes, let me know if you have ever tried to paint grass and how you got on, if you got on all right. Because today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you step by step how to paint three different sizes of grass. I am going to show you how to paint small grass from my um, Kiwi Summer painting. So small grass and I'll show you how to do a bit of the shading as well. So short grass and I'm going to show you how to paint medium length grass. So this is like longer sort of knee high grass type thing. Um, you know a little bit longer, a little bit detailed as well and it's all easy as. And I'm also going to show you, if you've already seen behind me, Pukeko has some nice big grass in it. So I'm going to show you how to paint this and with a bit of shading on each one. I don't know if you can see that very well, but um, I will show you how to paint them all. And it's all easy as. Um, whoops, make sure I don't let the Pukeko fall over. Um, and once I've shown you how to paint your grass, um, if you'd like to get some practice on whole paintings, I have some online tutorials and classes coming up that uh, have grass in them, some paintings with grass in them. So I will tell you all about those. And if you're in Wellington, uh, the three I just showed you are all coming up in the studio as well. So say hi if you've just come on. Let me know who's here. Let me know where you're watching from. Hi. Um, okay, so I'm going to attempt now to switch rooney over there so you can see my let me just move the facebook people first and then instagram you can do a little swivel there hopefully you can all see that all right cool okay oh now um right i'm going to turn this light back on as well it was just a bit glary before hopefully that makes it a little all a little better to see so I'm going to start with the short grass and I'm going to use my favorite brush. It's a fan brush and it's awesome. It's just the best. You can do so many things uh, with this one. I have a blog that shows you all the different brushes and different things you can do with it if you want to see more. But for today, I'm going to show you how to paint grass. All right. Uh, and I'm starting with the short grass. So I'm going to get some light green. Just put these out of the way. I'm going to get some light green a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin that a bit with water because what we want, the beauty of this brush is that the bristles are all nicely splayed out. So we're going to thin that a little bit with water and what you need is for your bristles to be separated. All right. If there's too much on there, just sort of do a light dab on a towel or something and separate them a little bit um, just so the bristles are not clumped together. All right. And then we want to do, I'll do my short grass at the top. Just really light little dabs with the tip of our paintbrush, all right? They're all curved and you just sort of keep overlapping them. And you can see that as I put that on, a bit of a blob on the bottom there, as I put that on, they all sort of overlap and you get lots of little pieces of grass, all right? If we just keep going, making sure that our bristles are splayed out and just using the tip of our brush and we just keep overlapping Lots and lots of overlapping until we create that sort of grassy texture. Keeping on overlapping. And what I like to do is just do the odd little dip of a slightly different colour just to mix it up a little bit. So I've just added a little bit of green in there, darker green, and that just, you use the brush to essentially, the, each bristle as it touches the canvas will look like a little piece of grass. All right, so I've just created my nice little patch of grass here, um, and you don't want to, you don't, um, you don't actually do a brush stroke per se. You literally just do a dab, just the very tip of your brushes, just 
tap them very lightly on, on the canvas, all right? If you do a stroke, you're going to get a whole different effect, which is fine too, but for the point of painting, painting grass, you just want to use the very, very tip of your brush and a very light tap on your canvas, and you'll get all this lovely, beautiful grass. If you want grass that's a little bit longer, um, use a little more of your bristle, and then you can make your grass a bit longer but do make sure that there's not too much of a clump of paint you know a big big blob of paint it's really important to have your bristles separated so that each individual bristle makes a nice piece of grass you can see here I'm getting some nice I'm using a bit more of my brush and I'm getting some slightly longer grass and we're just overlapping and letting the brush create that nice grass texture so let me give you a close-up so you can see that so you can see it's all each each individual bristle essentially has created that lovely grass um, texture. Um, sorry, I just got to show the Instagram people up there as well. <laughs> I'm going to have to get my angles closer together. Cool. So hopefully you can see that all right. Um, now Facebook has been a little bit odd lately where it hasn't shown me any comments. Um, sometimes or even if there's anyone there so if someone could just pop a comment in and let me know that the comments are working that'd be awesome now if you've got your grass right now on my kiwi summer painting we've got a tree all right and the tree casts a bit of a shadow so if you want some shadows all you have to do is the exact same thing you don't really need to clean your brush the exact same thing um, but just use a darker color and now just be aware that you go too much darker and it's going to be really dominant. But same thing, you just make sure your bristles aren't too close together or clumped. Dab them on your rag if you need to. And we just add shadows by doing a few light little taps with the darker green. So if there's a tree here or something, we can just add the shadow with that darker green. Easy. Look at that. We've just created shadow and it still looks like grass. It's just a little bit darker. All right nice and easy cool so that's our grass with our shadow now it's really important to just make sure you thin it properly with water though because if it's too thick you're going to get a big solid lump oh hello susan susan from up the coast thank you so much for letting me know someone's there and that the comments are working thanks for joining me susan i'm sure it's lovely up the coast today um okay now if you have lots of objects in your painting like for example my kiwi summer here there's a tree and there's a caravan um, make sure that when you're putting your shadows in think about your light source where the light's coming from in this case the light's coming from this side so my shadow is going to be on the right hand side the opposite side where the sun is coming from and of course i've got my caravan as well with the shadow make sure that all your shadows are on the same side or it's going to look a little bit weird if they're like you've got two light sources which I actually have got today but the sun is only one light source so make sure you put all your shadows in on the same side um, but do experiment I mean this is a fun brush do experiment um, just when you know even if you use a canvas and then paint over it and have a practice and then paint over it later absolutely fine um, now that grass that I've just shown you, like I said, is from my Kiwi Summer paint party uh, painting. It's this one here, Kiwi Summer, with nice happy um, Pahutakawa blossoms as well in that one. Um, and I will be teaching that one in the studio this weekend if you are in Wellington and you want to learn to paint this one. It's part of my Painter's Choice event, um, which means that you get to choose what you want to paint. That's this Saturday, the 27th of March. So pop on over to the website, heartforart.co.nz. Grab your ticket to that. Make your choice. Decide what you want to paint. And then and then grab your ticket and come paint with me. Um, and that one will also be on demand. I will have that one on demand very soon as well. Um, so that's Kiwi Summer. Yay. I was hoping to get that online today. But that one will be available on demand early next week, hopefully. Um, you'll get a video tutorial of me showing you step by step just like this um, and yeah it'll be good fun now if you've got an object like in this one that is in the grass so if you've got a caravan that um, or anything that's in the grass really and you want to make it look like it's in the grass just do a few extra little you know dabs of grass in front of whatever it is that you've painted I don't know if you can see there in front of my caravan there's just a few little extra green green touches at the front there. So if you can see that. 
um, that just makes it look like it's actually in the grass rather than floating over the top of it. Um, and I'm just going to give you an extra little tip here. Once you've painted your grass, if you've got a little tiny liner brush, just dip that in the brush and you can make some really quick easy flowers just using the very tip of a small liner brush. I've just dipped a little bit in red and you can just do some little dots, little dots and make it look like flowers. You can have red flowers if you want or you can have yellow flowers. I'm going to dip some in yellow and you can just make yourself a nice little bunch of daisies or flowers and they're so easy to do. It's literally just a tap of your brush um, and they're quite little so let me bring that a bit closer so you can see it. You see my little flowers? Just showing the Instagram people first and then I'll show you here down on Facebook. See, just it's literally just little taps with the tip of your paintbrush. And you've got a nice little field of flowers, little mini flowers. Cool. Um, so next I'm going to show you medium sized grass. And sometimes I put a base colour down first um, just to give it a nice richness behind it. So I'm going to show you this grass here. Um, this has got a base colour underneath it, but just to speed it up a little bit today, I won't do that. But it just gives, in case you miss any gaps, it gives a nice background colour. Um, so I'm just going to do the detail today. So I'm going to use my liner brush when I can find that. And just to give you an idea of how I'm doing this, I'm going to demonstrate pressure of brushes. I mean, if you're, if you're painting grass and you're just new to painting, um, when you are painting, the pressure you put on your brush determines how thick or thin the line is. So just over here, off to the side, so it doesn't ruin my canvas. If you press really lightly, you're going to get a thin line. Press a little bit harder, you're going to get a thicker line. Press really hard, you're going to get a thicker line again. Okay, so that's just brush pressure. So if you want some slightly thicker grass, press a little bit harder. If you want thinner grass, um, don't press as hard. And now if you want really nice thin grass, um, you know, make sure you put a little bit of water in your paint and just um, thin it a little bit and it'll go on a bit easier. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a combination of greens and all I'm going to do is just do light little flicks, lots of light little flicks, random directions. I mean I'm imagining my bottom of my painting is here. But you can just do lots of light little flicks in different directions, some thick, some thin, and just sort of keep overlapping them. And then when I think I've got a few there, I'm going to dip in my dark green, do the same, and just sort of blend them all together. And we're going to let the colours blend a little bit. Um, see, I've got dry brush, brush lines there, if you can see that. They're a little bit dry. All right, they're not coming on nice and clean, those ones at the end there. So that is just because there's not enough paint or your paint's just a bit dry, it's a bit warm. So you just dip your brush in water and thin it a little bit and do a bit of a twirl and pull to get a point and that will give you nicer, oh, more water. That will give you nicer points to your grass. You can go the other way as well, but it'll, it'll mean that your grass is thicker at the top. So it's easier if you go from the bottom just do lots of light little flicks and overlap them and then you can go back to your other green and just keep sort of overlapping. This is just such a nice, simple, easy way to do your grass. Keep overlapping, changing your colours and then if you want to get really experimental, um, use some other colours. Um, you know, get some of that yellow, put some of the yellow in there and all of those colours will blend on your brush. And you'll get some lots of different hues of greens and yellows and that just will make it look even more like the light is playing through your grass you know lights and shadows and just sort of keep overlapping and repeating and if you want it to be a little bit darker dip your brush in black now don't do too much because that will be quite dominant you know you put some black on and then sort of go over it with some other colors that just create a few sort of shaded areas and you can just sort of keep overlapping now it looks a bit weird with nothing behind it <laughs> but on a painting it looks a whole lot better um, 
and just do some taller, some shorter. Put some more green on if you want. If what, once you start getting too many colours on your brush, it, w brush it will start getting a bit muddy. So every now and then, just give it a wipe. You don't have to wash it, but do give it a bit of a wipe, and that'll just give you cleaner colours again. And just sort of keep overlapping till you're happy. Do a bit of white in there as well. This is how I've done it on my Castle Point painting. Just continually sort of overlapping and dipping in, in the different colours until I'm happy. Some, some shorter. Oh, some darker. Some thinner. Some thicker. And you just sort of keep going. Um, and you can experiment with your colours, you know, but don't get too carried away. Um, you can you can kind of go overboard and it's very tempting to just keep going like I'm doing now. But I just want to do a few little thin ones up through there. Lovely. Um, and the same as if you have anything else, um, you know, like here for example, I've got some some rocks behind the grass. So you just do a few lines over top of the rocks and that will look like it's then in front of the rocks um, and not floating so this one is this this style of grass is is from my castle point painting which i just showed you um, that one is available on demand um, so you can paint that at home anytime you like if you you know once you've practiced your grass and you want to paint a whole painting with grass, you can grab that one on demand. Um, just head over to my website, www.hutforart, and in the menu, click on on demand, and you will see that one and a few other ones there as well. Um, and I'm also teaching this one in the studio in Wellington. If you're in Wellington, come join me. Uh, I can't remember when, April? 17 off the top of my head um, so yeah head over to the website heart for art and click on the upcoming events in the menu now this would look better if, if there was like you know it was coming out the bottom of a canvas like that it looks a bit weird because I've got just grass <laughs> just go <laughs> at both ends it just keeps going um, but yes, that, that one's a good one. All my paintings, all the paintings I teach are really just super easy. I break everything down into simple steps. Um, so as long as you can hold a paintbrush and follow simple steps, you will be able to paint any of my paintings. I've made them, I've pretty much designed them all to be doable by anyone, even if you've never had a paintbrush before. Okay, so... Um, now I'm going to move on to large grass, although hang on, I just want to fix up that big dollop of white in there, I'm not so happy with that. I've done them more, I need to do some slightly longer ones as well actually. Well see, you can just keep going, you get lost in it and you can just keep going. It's so easy to just get lost in your painting, which is what I love about it. I just love, love, love that you can just get so lost in it, in a good way that is. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Still, I didn't fix that. Okay, I'm stopping. <laughs> um, uh, okay, I'm gonna to switch to a slightly larger brush now. So that's our medium-sized grass, which is at the bottom of my Castle Point painting. Although this one hasn't got any yellow, and I've just added that today because you can do whatever you like, essentially. Um, so now large grass. I'm gonna use a bigger brush. Where is it? I've got a number eight brush here now, but essentially. This technique will work for any any brush size, really. You'll just have a slightly different scale of grass at the end of it. So if you want smaller grass, use a smaller brush. If you want bigger grass, use a bigger brush. So I'm going to use light green. And I'm going to add a little bit of water just to thin that paint and make sure I get nice clean edges. I don't want any dry brush, dry brush effect happening. I want nice clean edges. And essentially I'm just going to paint a, a blade of grass. You know, this is the big, the big version. Um, now, because I don't have a background down, it's going to look a little bit transparent. If that happens, what you can do, some colours are very transparent. It's just add a dash of white. White is, is not at all transparent. So if you add a dash of white, 
then it's going to be less transparent. Okay, so I'm just going to put my blade of grass there. I haven't left myself a lot of room at the bottom of my canvas. And to get that nice tip, you can do that twirl and pull to get a tip on your, on your blade of grass there. And then once you've got your um, first blade down, you want to start with the back, the back. If you want to have lots of blades of grass, like here, you want to start with the ones at the back first. Because the way it works is that whatever brush stroke you do last, so for example, if I do another one now, I'll do one that goes over here. Whatever brush stroke you do last is the one that's going to look like it's on in the front. All right. So you can see I've now painted this one over top of the other one, and you can see that that very clearly looks like it's in front of... Um, the other one. So start from the back, where, wherever you want your blades of grass, start from the back and work your way forwards. Um, but I'm going to go back to this one now, so if I go like that, this one is instantly in the front again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where my light source is coming from. I'll have it the same same side. And I'm going to add, I'm going to just wipe my brush a little bit, and I'm going to add a dip of yellow. All right, And I'm just going to put that on wherever the sun would hit, and that just gives it a nice little highlight on that side okay so it would hit there as well on that one I'm being a little bit rough today because I'm painting like beside my canvas <laughs> instead of in front of it so that I'm not blocking your view and then we do the same on the other side but this time with a dark green all right so we just dip our brush in dark green and where this you know the opposite side of of where the um, sun would hit we're just going to blend in a little bit of that dark green and we're just going to keep going over it a few times um, might have to make that a bit fatter at the bottom and just blend that in with the original green all right we may need a little bit more green again um, so what we end up with I've got very short grass today because I've run out of canvas <laughs> what we end up with is something that sort of blends from yellow through to your light green and then your darker shade on the other side all right um i'm just going to put a little bit more green up there and you can have it as dark or as light as you want because you're the artist you get to decide that's the beauty of painting no one can tell you you've done it wrong whatever you decide is correct so i'm just going to put a bit more in just to accentuate that today you can blend it soft or you can have, you know, rough brush strokes like I'm doing. It's entirely dependent on what your preference is. So you can see now I've got a shaded blade of grass. Da -da -da -da. One shaded blade of grass. And then you just keep going and rinse and repeat, essentially, um, until you've got all your grass there. Um, what you want to do, though, is do it one blade at a time because essentially i mean unless the paint's staying wet for quite a long time um essentially to to have colors blend together both those colors need to be wet if either of them is already dry the colors are not going to blend and you're just going to be putting the colors over the top so you want to be doing it one blade of grass at a time i should have left myself a bit more room at the bottom of the canvas so that's right um, so that you're not going back onto one that's already dry. All right, so I've got my green, and then wherever this, well, the sun's not really going to hit that, maybe a little bit at the bottom there. I'm just going to add my yellow in. And then my dark green on the right-hand side, probably only a little bit down the bottom here on this one. And if you need to, you just add a bit more of your original green to blend it and to soften the transition between those. There we go, another blade of grass. Now this one is, this grass I'm showing you today is from Penelope, our perky Pukeko. Um, she's quite lovely. Um, one, of, one, of, one of you guys on Facebook named her actually. I can't remember who that was, but thank you for that. Um, She's quite lovely, and she's a popular one. Lots of people like painting Penelope. Um, this one I will be teaching in the studio this coming weekend as well, as part of the Painter's Choice event. Where am I going to put my next blade of grass? 
Uh, I'm going to put that one over the top. I just changed my mind. I want that one over the top coming through. Um, so yes, this one, Penelope will be, the Pukeko will be available in the Painter's Choice event this weekend. She's one of six choices. Painter's Choice, the way it works, you get to choose what you paint. Six paintings to choose from. Um, so yeah, if you want to paint Penelope, pop over to the website, heartbright.co.nz and, and grab yourself a seat. Um, it's going to be a fun one. Fun, a painter's Choice is always fun though. Because you just see so many different paintings coming to life as everyone's painting. It's great. And of course in the studio I will provide you all your materials. Um, oh, and there's a tracer. There's a tracer for Penelope as well. Actually that piece of grass needs to come out there, doesn't it? Um, there's a tracer for Penelope so you don't even... You can, you can trace your own... Draw your own Penelope if you want. Um, but you can also use the tracer if you want to make it easy on yourself. That's totally fine. So another blade of grass going in here. Now all your blades of grass should be a little bit fatter at the bottom than they are at the top. I've got short stumpy grass today because I've narrowed my space of for working. <laughs> um, which grass size do you like the best? Small, medium or large? Let me know. What, what would you like best painting or whatever? Small, medium or large? Or is your, are my lawn's a bit more like that but longer because I haven't mowed it in ages. Um, so just adding the dark shading on this side. It doesn't really matter which way around you do it but if you do do your dark first you'll want to be cleaning your brush before you do your lighter one um, because it'll just get a you know make it a bit of a muddy mess if you then go to your yellow um, I might just do another little bit of light on there there we go so all my light will be coming from that side to here so we just put a bit of light on there where the sun will hit it and then I'm just using a really soft touch because often when you push really hard it actually takes the paint off the canvas again um, and the, the paint is all in the belly of the brush so often you, you'll see me with my paintbrush parallel to the canvas because that actually puts a lot more paint down especially with these lighter translucent colours um, you'll find that if you press too hard it just kind of pushes the paint around and takes it off again so you definitely don't want to be pressing too hard or holding your brush too perpendicular to the canvas. And I've gone quite dark there. Okay, I think you get the gist now. I'm just like I said, I just I get lost in it and I just carry on. I could sit here for hours. I just I just love painting. It's just so lovely. Anyway, I'm gonna stop now. Although I need to fix that because there's a shadow on a side where there should be light which is weird, although it could be cast from the blade above. Oh, technicality there, there we go. <laughs> See, you just, I just can't stop. Okay, I'm stopping now. All right, so what I just taught you, I'm popping that in the water. What I just taught you was how to paint small grass. You use a small liner brush, just a small liner brush, a zero or a one or a two and alternate your colors, choose your colors you want and just little light flicks in different directions, some taller, some fatter, some thinner, some shorter and make sure your paint is, you know, got a little bit of fluidity to it so that um, you get nice points. You can see I've got some dry edges there so I would probably redo that. Um, on my Castle Point for example, um, I had much more fluid paint so there's no dry edges on there but given it's got a background as well it doesn't actually really matter so much um, have a play have an experiment um, and then I taught you medium grass from oh that was the medium grass oh I taught you small grass oh, <laughs> I'm getting confused small grass was from Kiwi Summer using the fan brush my favorite fan brush um, and again it's really important to make sure your paint is thinned sufficiently and that your bristles don't clump together all right and it's a light little touch with the very tip of your brush on the canvas it's not it's a tap it's not a it's not a brush stroke all right 
and that will give you some nice short grass. And if you want to add shadows, you just dip in the slightly dark, a slightly darker colour. And then little dips of paint for flowers at the end. Um, and I showed you how to paint your big blades of grass as well. And using a slightly larger brush, um, putting your main colour down first and then adding dips of light colour where the sun would hit and dips of darker colour where the shadows would be and just sort of blending them gently together. Um, and that you have to start at the back and whatever last stroke you do will make it look like that one is in front. All right. So if you're doing two and you change your mind, you just do another brush stroke and that will put the other one back in front. All right. So let me switch back cameras and just finish up. Uh, well, I need to I'll turn that light off again, otherwise you'll get blinded by it because it's quite bright. Hello, hello. Oh, wait. Okay, Instagram's wobbling a bit far there. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, so I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, all my paintings are really easy to do. I just break it all down nice and simple. Um, so thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, like it, love it, share it, tell everyone about it. I would just want to help other people learn to paint as well. Um, and go practice painting grass. Like I said, if you've got a canvas, paint over it. Have a practice, paint over it white, and you can reuse the canvas if you want to. Um, okay, and look out for next week's Hearty Tips with Silka. I haven't quite decided what I will be um, sharing with you next. I did have an idea. Hmm. Okay, but have a look out for it next week. Um, and once you've had some practice painting your grass. Hi, Michelle. Oh, good. I'm glad you found that useful. Lovely. Go and have a practice paint your grass. And then once you've done your practice painting your grass and you'd like to practice on a whole painting, um, I have, like I said, I have some online tutorials that have grass in them. <laughs> so go and grab one of those. And there's a few other ones there if you don't want to paint grass. Um, I've just put the Tui there actually. The Tui is quite a nice one to paint. Um, or if you're in Wellington, the three I showed you today are all coming up in the studio so you can come and have some fun painting those with me. On Demands you will get a step-by-step -step video tutorial of me just like I showed you now to do the whole painting. I will give you a full supply list, uh, tell you all your painting colours, I'll give you a um, sample of the painting to print out and use as a reference. Um, and any help you need, you can just message me and get in touch. Um, and yeah, you can paint at home at your own pace, push, play, pause, whatever, have a wine, turn it into a wine and sip. Lovely. And if you're wanting to paint with me in the studio, all of that, just not on video, it's live, it's me right there in front of you. Uh, and I will provide all your materials, your paints, your brushes uh, to use, your canvas to use, um, everything. And same step by step like I showed you here. And and afternoon tea. You'll get afternoon tea as well. I've got stacks of Tim Tams and I always get a nice cake and some savoury snacks and loads of yumminess and of course it's a fun studio environment and other people there to to paint with as well um yeah but if neither of those are your thing i do virtual paint parties as well so it's same as this just a little bit longer to do a whole painting so good fun i do load new events all the time um and tutorials so it does pay to go back and check often um I was hoping to, like I said, load the Kiwi summer, the, the caravan one on demand today, but I did run out of time, so hopefully that will be there next week. But I'm, I'm loading new ones all the time, and same with online events and studio events as well. So just keep going and looking, heartforart.co.nz, um, and the menus, on demands, upcoming tutorials, etc. Um, paint parties. Uh, so yes thank you for watching me today thank you for joining on instagram up there instagram up there and facebook down here i actually managed to get it going and actually linkedin and youtube at the same time so i'm learning new stuff i just want to i just want more people to experience how good it feels to paint i just want to spread art joy across the world so that's my goal there um so yes 
have fun practicing your grass i'd love to see your paint painting if you painted some nice grass if you want to share it with me message it to me paste it in a comment anything email it to me send it on a pigeon that might be a bit tricky though um so yeah practice your grass and then head over to my website heartforart.co.nz and click on the upcoming events or on demand links in the menu and grab your tickets and tutorials and just have some fun lots of creative fun learning to paint painting your masterpieces yay yes thank you for joining me today have fun painting your grass and i hope to see you behind a paintbrush really soon bye everyone enjoy the rest of your week